the sun, the Holy Ghost, and then. He, this is the vigil of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Tomorrow, Mass will be at 10 o'clock here, uh, High Mass, in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Such a great feast, such a happier occasion for all of us to honor our Blessed Mother in Heaven, who has assumed body and soul, who has conceived without sin, who has raised above all the saints and above all women, above all the angels. After God, there is no one higher than the Blessed Virgin Mary. She is God's most beautiful creation. She is God's most precious diamond. And in the scriptures, it is full of all the comparisons of the Virgin Mary, as all the, the best-smelling flowers, roses, the best-smelling the best and effective herbs, cinnamon, balsam, is all given to her title. And the best, everything the best for her. And she's compared to many, many things in scripture. The rose, the flowers, the fields, the army dressed for battle, and uh, the fair as the moon, bright as the sun. And this is the Virgin Mary, and God wants her honored. God wants her honored. And I read the boys at the very start of this pilgrimage, a great quote from St. Anselm. I'll read it again. Many things are asked of God and are not obtained. What is asked of Mary is obtained. Not because she is more powerful than God, but because God himself decreed thus to honor her, that men may know that she can obtain all things from God. But God doesn't always answer those who go directly to him. Like all the Protestants say, forget Mary, always God, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But God and Jesus don't always answer prayers because they want Mary to be honored. Through her they give the grace. Through her they give the privileges and the petitions. And that's the honor God wants for his mother. So, all the boys today, you got to see probably how many churches, probably six or seven churches. And it's always, of course, so um, revolting to see the damage done by modernism. Vatican II and the New Mass has gutted out our churches, gutted out the altar. It's the, and if the Blessed Sacrament is present, you're not sure. And there's always that table, that Protestant table, and the, the carelessness given to the tabernacle. In one of the churches, remember I pointed out, notice a table in the middle and the tabernacle is on the side. This is one of the beautiful churches here in Quebec. And many of these churches, the high altar was smashed literally smashed with bulldozers, with, uh, with uh, sledgehammers, crowbars, you name it. And this is what they did all over the world, smashed the altars, replaced them with tables. And some of these altars were magnificent marble, intricate artistic work for the glory of God, all smashed. And we shake our heads and say, how is this possible, this, this, this barbaric invasion in the sanctuary? Just worse than the Puritans smashing and whitewashing all the altars in England and in the altars in Germany. Much worse. And the carelessness to, towards the sacred things. But this is lamentable, but there's something far more damaging, and that is the soul. Our soul and our body are truly temples of God. Know you not that you are temples of God, says St. Paul, and that the Holy Ghost dwells in you. And your altar is your heart. St. Augustine says this, the altar is our heart. The incense that burns up towards God is our, is our thoughts. Holy thoughts and prayers and humility of heart and contrition and, uh, and, and gratitude toward God. These are all like incense that rises to God. These are the thoughts from our mind. And our, and our body and our soul 
become truly the temples of the Blessed Trinity by our baptism from the, from the day you were baptized. And as long as we stay in the state of grace, God the Blessed Trinity dwells in our soul as a guest, as in a chalice, as in a tabernacle. And this is really, this is true, this is real. And this it, 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 it per, per, permeates all the scriptures and all the writings of the fathers of the church. <coughs> That we really are living temples of the Blessed Trinity, who dwells in the soul. And God wants this friendship with us. Our Lord showed St. Teresa of Avila her soul in the state of grace. And she, she, she was so taken back, and she thought it was an angel. She thought it was a seraph, or a cherubim. And our Lord told her, no, Teresa, that is your soul, because I dwell in your soul. It was so beautiful. So... That is God, that's what God wants. And what can be worse than putting a sledgehammer to the tabernacle of our soul and our body by mortal sin? Or smearing mud all over the altar by impurities or greed or sins against justice. Any sin put mud and smash, and mortal sin completely smashes that altar the presence of the Blessed Trinity in our soul. So Father Theo used to say, when we're in the state of grace, God dwells in us. When we're in mortal sin, the devil is enthroned on the tabernacle of our hearts and in our bodies and minds. So, but it's up to us. So there's nothing worse than that, to fall in mortal sin. And should we do so by weakness and by stupidity, get back to the sacred heart of Jesus. Make a perfect act of contrition. This is what priests always say to the soldiers before they go out to battle. Make a perfect act of contrition if you cannot get the confession. Because then God in His infinite mercy can, He can, and this is the teaching of the church, He can through His infinite mercy and love wash away the sin. He can, and He will. St. Teresa of the Child Jesus, she boldly says these words. She says, our Lord is wise, infinitely wise, but he has one weakness. He is a bad mathematician. So that if the worst sinner on earth, the worst criminal, who has committed all the moral sins possible against every single commandment, if at the moment when he's dying, he really turns to God with a sincere contrition, and of course that's a grace that God must give, but if God gives that grace of contrition, and he really says our Lord, to our Lord, I'm very sorry for all my sins. And our Lord, says St. Teresa, melts like butter and will forgive him and snatch his soul from hell. And we're going to see in heaven, no doubt, how many, how, just how many souls the Virgin Mary, who has, who has interceded to win the, this grace for many souls, just how many she will have snatched from hell through her powerful intercession. So let's consecrate ourselves to her, the Virgin Mary. We want to give our body and soul to her, to her immaculate heart. If God wants Russia to be consecrated to his mother's heart, all fortiori, all the more, he wants each one of us to consecrate ourselves, our families, our businesses, our cities, our nation, everything to her. God wants her honored. So let's uh, salute her in this great night of her assumption, and let's adore our Lord present here in the Blessed Sacrament very soon. Kneel down with the Virgin Mary to adore her son. And like old Father Urban always used to say, ask our Lord, Lord, give me, give uh, to the Virgin Mary, give me, O oh Mother, a little bit of the fire of your heart to love our Lord with. And to our Lord, Lord, give me some flame of your heart to love your mother with. Because these are graces that we have to ask. She's the mediatrix of all graces. And this should have been declared at Vatican II. All the bishops, they should have declared with the Pope, the, 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 the mother of God, as mediatrix of all graces. But why didn't they? Why didn't they do it? Archbishop Lefebvre says because it would offend the Protestants. It was not pleasing to the ecumenical people, to the modernists. So that's why they put that in the drawer, along with the signatures to have 
the consecration of Russia done by the Pope, and also uh, to consecrate, well, to consecrate Russia as, as, as 450 signatures that Archbishop Lefebvre collected at the Vatican II to have the Pope do this. But all this was totally ignored because Our Lady would offend the Protestants. So let's all honor her, honor her, and be close to her. O Mary conceived without sin. 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 O Mary conceived without sin.